Hello and welcome to Cinematic Love Affairs. My name is Nini and today we're going to talk about Amazon Prime's most anticipated rom-com of this summer. We're going to talk about Red, Red and Royal Blue. The movie is based on Casey McQuiston's novel of the same name and directed by Matthew Lopez who is known for his 2018 play The Inheritance. Please note that the movie was recorded in August 2022 prior to the SAC Astra strike. First, I'm sorry for the person I turned to while talking about this movie. I really need a boyfriend. Let me know in the comment section if you're also using romance movies as a substitute for romantic love. Alright, let's take a deep dive into Alex's and Henry's love affair. This story focuses on Alex Clermont Diaz, the first son of the United States, and his feud with the young prince of England, Henry. They both harbour a deep contempt for each other, which is the result of an awkward first meeting, after Alex and Henry cast a major incident at the older prince's wedding, the two were forced to stage a trouse. Their icy relationship unexpectedly melts into a real friendship that blossoms into something even more. It's a romance movie, so there won't be any twist turns or unexpected plot lines. This isn't a Shakespeare play. A happy ending is guaranteed. The pacing of the plot was pleasant. The movie is nearly two hours long, but I was so engrossed in what was happening that the time just flew by. Lopez's creative decisions made it easy to watch. The dialogue and the mentioned scenes are well balanced. The flirting between Alex and Henry is depicted in visuals that play with the characters reciting their text while shown on screen, although they are not physically together. Sense and Sensibility is a great book. I recommend it. Henry does not only have impeccable taste when it comes to men. What I find remarkable is the fact that Lopez has made the decision to play the New Year's Eve party scene in slow motion, in which Alex and Henry are on the dance floor gazing at each other. It forecasts Henry's not so sudden initiative to kiss Alex in the heat of the moment for the very first time. It's the turning point for their relationship and forces Alex to re-evaluate his feelings for Henry. The casting in a romance movie is extremely important. Bad choices can turn a great love story into a cringe fest. After all, on-screen chemistry is hard to fake. Talisa Caparez plays Alex Clement Diaz. One role that established him as the boyfriend of the internet was definitely his role as Marco in the Kiss and Wolf sequels. And honestly, if I were L, I would have totally hit it off with of Marco. I'm a sucker for guys who can sing and play the guitar. Taylor totally knows how to play a half prop on screen. This is the second time that Nicholas Gallatin has played the prince. He previously played Prince Robert in Cinderella with Camilla Cabello. I don't know if you have watched the movie, but it's one of the worst tracks on Cinderella, which is my favorite fairy tale of all time. Anyway, I would have totally hit it off with Prince Robert as well. I always wanted to become a princess. Nicholas is a real British boy with an accent and has previously played a royal. My expectations are high. I guess we can all agree that Tyler and Nicholas are experts when it comes to playing the male lead in a romance movie. But Royal Blue is a movie about a queer couple. They're both presumed to be heterosexual. So for two straight guys, friendship, chemistry and compatibility are just as important in order to play a romantic couple on screen. If you haven't watched the interview with GQ yet, I wholeheartedly recommend it. The banter between them is so natural. You could have easily convinced me that these two have been friends their entire lives. They're so funny and clearly incredibly comfortable with each other. It's their electrifying chemistry that makes every scene so enjoyable in the movie. You can tell that Taylor and Nicholas are committed to their leading roles. They both understand their characters in their respective journeys. Under the conscious direction of Lopez, they are able to deliver a beautiful performance. Their many affectionate and comedic moments are food for the soul. But they also exhale during the scenes of struggle as Alex and Henry try to figure out if their own happiness and their loyalty to their country can coexist. Taylor's performance as Alex is undeniably perfect. Alex is an outgoing and extroverted character who is basically a sunflower on two legs. He oozes self-confidence. He's so sure of himself in every single aspect of his life. There's a thin line between being confident 
and cocky. But Taylor's performance was nuanced and well balanced. Alex is outspoken and wears his heart on his sleeve. There's a line that Taylor delivered so beautifully. Quote, it's like there is a rope attached to my chest and it's pulling me towards you. End of quote. I was giggling and kicking my feet like an idiot. But my heart was not prepared for Henry's reaction. Taylor is definitely in the upper echelon on my list of endearing rom-com leads. Nicholas' performance as Prince Henry did exceed my expectations. He's the perfect fit for the more introverted Henry, who struggles with the expectations placed on him since birth. It's an honest human portrayal of self-doubt, and the struggle one faces in an environment that doesn't allow you to be your true self. And what really surprised me is that his performance was far more moving than one would expect in this movie genre. Henry's inner turmoil is delivered more subtly, like his habit of playing with his wing when he's nervous. As Henry becomes more comfortable with himself and Alex, he basically comes to life like daffodils under an icy layer of snow in early spring. After Alex basically confesses his love for him, he panics and leaves the vacation house of the Claremont Diaz in the middle of the night. Henry ghosts Alex again and after some very good advice from Nora, I love her, Alex takes a flight to the UK to talk things out. Henry's emotional outburst is done so authentically that I really shed some tears. There is something about Nicholas' eyes. Nicholas' portrayal of Henry is flawless. What I really appreciate about their love story is the fact that their queer identities are openly discussed. After their New Year's kiss, Henry basically ghosts Alex. The state dinner rekindles their mutual attraction for each other, which results in a makeup scene in the red room and later in Alex's room. After doing some not so innocent things to each other, they have another heart to heart and come out. Alex is bi and Henry is gay as a maypole. Henry nervously invites Alex to watch him play polo and do other things that get Alex's heart raising as well. The most intimate scene in the movie is when they are visiting Paris and Henry asks Alex if he wants to make love tonight. Alex is inexperienced and the more experienced Henry takes the lead. The scene is tastefully done. They take their time and carefully and gently explore their bodies. The shots on their hands were exquisite. I literally had chills all over my body. The scene captured the beautiful, awkward, realistic side of intimacy. After all, this is a romance movie, so tropes are a force to be reckoned with. The first trope in Roy Blue is enemies to lovers, and I love it. There is a thin line between love and hate, which is why enemies to lovers is not only the most popular trope, but probably the most overused as well. The use of the trope occurs very briefly at the beginning of the movie. Their disdain for each other was steered by a misunderstanding. They have a heart-to-heart -heart in a janitor's office, in a hospital, and all their issues are solved. Communication is key. The second trope is stuck together. One could argue that stuck together is the same trope as forced proximity. Remember, they had only one bed. But I would argue that stuck together is the perfect mix of forced proximity and enemies to lovers, with the added tension that they can't escape one another. At first, Alex and Henry are pretending to be friends and are forced to make many public appearances. The joint interviews at the beginning of the movie are held Hilarious. You're just waiting for one of them to overdo it. But their fake friendship blossoms into a romantic relationship and they physically seek each other's closeness. The third trope is forbidden love. If you're one of the fortunate souls who read Romeo and Juliet and enjoyed it, you will totally understand why forbidden love is such a great trope. After Prince Harry's revelations in his infamous biography, The Spur, the life of a royal can be compared to the life of a caged bird that still has to sing. Henry's mental and emotional cage is portrayed painfully real in the movie. I suffered with him. Alex and Henry live privileged lives, but it makes navigating their relationship even more difficult, especially after their private text messages and emails get leaked by Miguel. I really hated Miguel. A romance movie 
is a group effort. And without the encouraging and loving advice of our supporting characters, our two lovebirds would have a hard time. The entire cast is perfect. Yuma Fern as President Alan Clearmont and Alex's mother is a match made in heaven. I love Yuma Fern and nobody could have delivered the line, she's not a Republican, is she? Or, well, you know, the being LGBTQ is not a silent letter like her. Oscar Diaz played Clifton Collins Jr. Was such a sweetheart. He just reiterates love. Everyone should have loving and accepting parents like Alex. But I also want to give it up for Rachel Hilson, who plays Alex's friend, Noah. She keeps Alex in check with her witty observations and real talk. He really has had a huge crush on Henry for years. Seva Shehi as the president's deputy chief of staff, Zara, made me laugh the most. The scene where she discovers Henry hiding in Alex's hotel room is so funny. Alex's friends and family are accepting and supporting. It's a great juxtaposition to Henry's struggles. Although he has one ally who supports his relationship with Alex, the talented Ali Bamba plays Princess Beatrice, his sister. It's in the same scene in which Henry gets busted for having a sleepover with Alex by Zara that he joyfully confesses that his sister is happy for them. The soundtrack in Roy Blue was crafted carefully and incredibly well. Henry performing Queen's Don't Stop Me Now during a fun karaoke night had me giggling and kicking my feet. It truly forecasts Alex's change of feelings for Henry. Another remarkable scene is the cake incident at the beginning of the movie, with Bad Reputation by Joanne Judd playing. It was the perfect choice. My favorite scene that highlights the importance of music is when a cover of Can't Help Falling in Love by Perfume Genius is being played. Henry took Alex to his private refuge, which is a museum on the palace grounds. Henry confesses that he has always imagined what it would feel like to dance arm in arm with someone he loves in his private refuge. And of course, Alex takes his phone out and they dance to the cover of Perfume Genius. It really took my breath away. It was so beautiful. The movie is visually stimulating. Lopez did a fantastic job, but I also want to highlight the job of everyone involved in the making of Red, White and Royal Blue. All the talented people who worked on the movie did a fantastic job creating a welcoming world that is so pleasing to the eyes and ears. Without the people who work incredibly hard behind the camera, wonderful movies like this one here wouldn't be possible. That's why we should all support the SAG Astro strike. One of my favorite shots is the cake scene. It's just a great shot and I was giggling like crazy. But I also love Paris. The first time is portrayed exquisitely. And the Buckingham Palace shot when Henry plays with his finger, which is usually graced by a ring, and the camera moves to Alex's hand, rubbing said ring and playing with it. I was giggling and kicking my feet. Every single detail in this movie was carefully composed. There are just so many breathtakingly shots. It's a feast for the eyes. I demand a director's cut. Let's talk about my overall rating on the Kitty Meter. I'm giving Red, White and Royal Blue 5 pass out of 5 on the Kitty Meter. Red, White and Royal Blue is a love letter to the LGBTQ community and romance fans. I'm still smiling from ear to ear after watching it and I can't wait to rewatch it again tonight. Overall, it is a joyful and heartfelt watch and a great reminder that love is worth fighting for. Did you love the movie just like me? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and see you in my next. Bye.